we're gonna start with Dark Souls 1 and uh, make our way through the uh, the different um, the different things while we listen to the soundtrack because that makes sense, right? Um, right. The way I set this up, I deleted one of the one of the tiers here, so we're going from S to F. <laughs> We've got S tier will be my absolute faves. A, very good. B means they're like, they're not bad. Like I like them, I think they're good. They just might not be as, you know, fave as A or S. C is kind of like, it's there. I don't hate it, but I don't really think about it. <laughs> like at all. D is like, I'm not a it's cool now. No, thank you. And F is, get the fuck out. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it here. Hey, Sega Mix, we're just actually sort of kind of getting started. We were busy talking about the this being things being scary in the woods versus things being scary in the desert. And then got talking about horror movies and skinwalkers and stuff. How are you this evening? We've got the Dark Souls soundtrack on. We're going to do the zones. We'll see where we get to. I mean, I might just get through all of them tonight, or we might get off on a tangent. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. We'll see. Um, and I'll try not to turn my head too far from the mic, because I decided to set it up, the, the actual tier on my secondary screen, which is why you can, like, see all of this. Ooh. Normally, you can't see this part when I'm using my browser. Tired after work. I bet. I have a relax, I hope. Have a relax. Well, since the music just kicked in, it's probably best if we start with Firelink. So don't mind me, I'm just pulling it up here so we can focus on it. It's not actually going into B. It's just so we can focus on the one I'm talking about. Firelink shrine what a place what a nice hub what an interesting little spot simultaneously comforting and melancholy as fuck the space is melancholy but most of the people there are not with the exception of crestfallen warrior most of the people that you meet and that end up back there or, you know, they're either cheery or they're fine, you know? Anastasia doesn't count because she can't even talk for most of the game. <laughs> and her deal is to, you know, be be the keeper, be the fire keeper. I always wish we learned more about the fire keepers because I think there's a lot of allusion to them being like, like, oh, the poor fire keepers, but they do this important thing. But also, who the fuck are they and why? <laughs> Anyway, don't want to get off on that tangent. Firelink it is visually interesting. It's one of the only places in the game, one of the only areas that has music. It's part of why you know it's important. And it has a giant birdie sitting on the top of it that helped you get there. And the giant birdie is definitely a corvid. So, like, come on, man. I... I kind of, I almost want to put it in S, but, but I want to save S for like the ones where I like lose my mind when they come up. The birdie is fun because they just, they just chill up there, you know, in case you need a ride, in case you need a ride back. So we're going to put it in A, but this is all subject to change depending on what, how things play out. It might get bumped up to S. I like it. I have a big big nostalgic feeling for it because Dark Souls 1 was my first Souls game. But... But it's still not my favorite hub. And no, neither is Bloodborne's. Haha. -ha. Bloodborne's is not my favorite either. Okay, Undead Parish or Undead Burgford. Let's do Undead Burg next. So Undead Burg, again, even though it's like... It maybe... Actually, I would say it's pretty visually interesting. Maybe it's not the most aesthetically pleasing, but it's still visually interesting. This idea of like a town that's like full of undead just chilling, doing their thing. 
<laughs> and you know, kids are trying to murder you. You know how they are. Um. So, undead Berg. Where to put you? Where to put you? I I have a soft spot for it because. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to move the music. I was just trying to turn it down a little bit. Um, I have a soft spot for it because, again, it was my first game, and when I was learning how to play Souls, I spent, like, four hours just repopping the Berg and learning how to fight dudes. So, I have a soft spot for it. But I don't think I would put it above B. And I don't think it deserves to be down at C, necessarily, either. But, mm, there are more interesting places, frankly. <laughs> just, you know... Just saying. Hmm. I would say that if I didn't have that weird attachment to it, even with the cool, like, red, like, Drake wyvern thing that, like, I think it's a Drake. Red Drake that shows up, which is a neat little... Or the cheerleaders are making you angry. I've never played Souls game. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Somebody might come in here and be like, "What? You don't have blanket S tier?" Be like, no, "No." Um, if I didn't have that nostalgia factor for the general undead Berg, I don't know if I would put it in B or not. I don't know if it's just there, but again, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Next up is Undead Parish, which is another one that's kind of tricky. Because it's like, oh, soft spot because I spent so much time in an early game, but mm, it does have some neat stuff. It's got, like, the cool statue with the lady holding the, the child and, inside, and there's all the Balder Knights. You learn how to fight the Balder Knights. You meet your first fucking channeler. Those bastards. Buffet all the dudes. And you get to fight the gargoyles. So I'm thinking maybe we'll put Parish in B. Because also Parish has Andre. Like, come on. I feel like the Parish zone is like maybe a little more interesting because you're starting to get towards the, the, the forest and all that. Um, okay. Let's see here. Dark Root Basin. Okay, so Dark Road Basin, that's the area with the Hydra and all like the weird little crystal golems. Um, it's, it's not like bad. Um, and I, I would argue that it's an interesting thing to go wandering into. But if we're going to think about the basin has been primarily that zone of Hydra and Crystal Golems, like, I would put this more C, just like, oh, it's there. Whereas Dark Root Garden, which is connected, kind of feel like Dark Root should just be like a generalized area. It would make it a lot easier. Because <laughs> if they put Berg and Parish together, it would also be easier for me. I just put it in B. Um, Dark Root Garden, though. Dark Root Garden... Ooh, this is gonna be this is gonna be tricky. Visually, it's neat. You have the, the weird tree that you like. You smack, and it like it actually like moves and disappears and stuff. You've got the big stone sentinel guys like that uh, hang out with the weird grass people. Uh, you have the strange like landbound manta ray things. You've got just the general feeling of being in a very old forest that's got magic going on. Plus, you've got Elvina and her forest hunters coming in, which is like, Elvina is one of my favorite characters. Big, old, talking cat. That even as she speaks, somewhere in the, it's like she has two, like, voice boxes. Like, she's talking, and in the back of her throat, you hear, like, the row, 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 in the background. It's very interesting. So I'm kind of tempted to put, oh, and of course, Sith. 
<laughs> Let's not forget stuff. So I'm gonna. A, because it makes me feel a lot of feelings that are not necessarily just tied to nostalgia, but to the game itself. I think I think it's a very good time. And it's pretty. It's pretty. And Alvina's not the only one of those cat things out there. They scary. <laughs> They're not all nice like her though. I put nice in quotation marks. I mean don't don't mess with that cat. She she'll fuck you up. Um Okay, the depths. Let's move on. The depths. So once you finally get the key to the depths, the depths is what's going to lead you to good old Blight Town. It's full of slimes. It's very confusing and maze like. It has the gaping dragon, which is fucking awesome. Love that dragon. So I'm tempted to, I'm tempted to put it in B instead of C, even though it's not like super long or super interesting. I've never understood why Pinwheel's music is so early in this soundtrack. <laughs> anyway, so we've got the depths and once you, once you defeat the Gaping Dragon, you can go down to Blight Town. So the Gaping Dragon, is probably part of what's keeping this in B, to be honest, instead of it just being C, but it might, I might move it down. I might move it down later. Here's good old Blight Town. Blight Con. Get your passes now. There will be glomping. And you won't like it. Uh, Blight Town, wow. The, the infamous Blight Town. The moment that everybody even even after long years now after they have fixed the frame rate issues down there nobody likes having to go to blight town yes it is visually weird and interesting blight town my beloved <laughs> it is visually weird and interesting but like It's a rite of passage. Blight Town is a rite of passage. So anytime I, I, I don't skip Blight Town. I always do Blight Town. I always go through it. Because it's just, it's part of the experience, right? The reason I quit Star Souls 1 was the frame issues in Blight Town. Yeah! Yeah, no, like, a, that, that shit was, like, bringing people to a standstill. They have long since fixed it, but it, it's one of those things. Yeah, no, absolutely. Ten or less. There were people getting, like, six. They, you, you like you couldn't function down there. It was really bad. I'm not gonna. I don't want to put it in. Get the fuck out because I, I still. Yeah, it's a fucking rite of passage getting through Blight Town successfully. Nowadays, how you doing, Stoked Up? <laughs> how you doing? So we're gonna put it in D. <laughs> um. And actually, now that I'm staring at it, I'm like, I kind of want to put... I love Gaping Dragon and all, but I think I'm going to put Depths in C. Like, Blight Town is very cool, and it's afraid of passage. But nobody loves, like... Well, that's a lie. Some people unironically do love Blight Town, but I think they love it for the reasons I stated, where it's like, yeah, it's like... It's so, like, punishing and rite of passage, and you gotta figure you're out... It's all rickety and falling apart. Um... It's very unique. Um, and so, so when you get to the end of Blight Town, you get to Quelag's Domain. So Quelag's Domain is, you know, a t it's a pretty small little zone. Small little zone, but it's still unique. It's a place you can come back to. It has the Fair Lady in it once you defeat Quelag. Um, and <laughs> Cat is giving me sugar. Um, Thank you, baby. Thank you. Um, Quaylog is a very cool boss, uh, and is very is actually unexpectedly important to the overall story of the world, right? Oh my gosh, Katerine! Welcome in. It's a Katerine. Hey, hey! Ow, ow! Cat, my finger is not food. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome in. 
Welcome, welcome. I'm Marley, the curse that lingers over this place known as the Haunt Hangout for Freaks, Misfits, and Weirdos. We are doing a tier list of Dark Souls areas. We're starting just with the first game. The, the, this, tier, this tier maker has all of them, but we're starting just with Dark Souls 1. <laughs> Fun fact, Katrin loves Dark Souls. <laughs> well, welcome in. Hi, hi. I see. I see guy and that Piper Piper do or Piper, sorry. Is it Piper or Piper? He's lying. I haven't played any. <laughs> and oh, who else? It was Twitch of Spades. Yes, hello. Welcome in. Um I was just talking about we were talking about how ow! Ow, ow, ow. Cat, please. I know it's a love bite, but ow. Ow. Piper do? Um, how, uh, Blight, I love Blight Town for it being a rite of passage, but it's always just like, no, it's Blight Town time. So I put it in G. Because it's not an, it's there. And it's not even bad, but it's Blight Town. <laughs> so we just put it here. Um, we're talking about Quaylag. Cool spider, half spider lady space um i'm putting it in b because it's spooky and interesting lore wise and the fair lady covenants in it so let's go valley of drakes I, I you know what i'm not even gonna put it here to talk about it it's there it exists if you need if you need if you need dragon scales you, you can go to the valley of drakes by a lot of drakes it's a very small area. There's not much to it. It does have the really cool undead dragon leading into it, but um, yeah, there's not really anything to that place. So uh, it's not much I can say about it except there are drakes. There's a ring. There's a, there's there's an undead thing leading into it. Meh. <laughs> um, and then let's see. What's next? What's next? What's next? Something much more interesting. Sen's Fortress. So once you have come, rung the bell of awakening in the Undead Parish, you defeat the Gargoyles, then you go all the way down to the bottom of Blight Town, past Quaylog, you get your butt past her, and you ring the bell down there, you get entrance to Sen's House of Fun. <laughs> it's Sen's Fun House. Um, full of traps. Like, almost cartoonish traps of, like, swinging pendulum blades. And there's, like, big old titanite demons waiting down at the bottom if you fall and manage to survive the fall. Like, it is, it's meant to be a trial, a literal physical trial. And there's, there's a giant rolling ball. Okay, there's, like, these giant rolling balls that are being dumped down and you have to like change their direction so you don't get like flattened running around certain areas and they'll go back if you're not careful and you have to do it again. Honestly, I think Sense Fortress is great. I don't know if I want to put it in A, but it's it's a good time. Like it's a good fucking time. It's a good time. Um and when you get to the end of it, you can call in Tarkus, the Black Iron Tarkus. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. So I'm gonna say it's gonna go in B. Let me give my, there we go, now it's working. What, no, no, my underscore didn't go. Pfft. Dismiss, okay, hang on. My underscore didn't go. Boo! Who is that person who stole your name? Alright, let me get it. Popped up properly. Okay, underscore is there this time. I'll have to give it a minute. Yeah, Sun's Fortress is just... It's cool. It's a good time. It's its not a good time. I don't know, but I want to have words with them. <laughs> I know, I typed it too fast and the underscore didn't go. Balls. Yeah, no, there's a, there's someone who has the name that I, I normally have, but I'm like, maybe it was me in the past because they've never, they haven't signed in in like five years. So it was the me of the past that did it. Now I can't figure out how to get into the account. It's fine. 
Hello, I'm Marley Gray. Um, <laughs> let's see, how long do I have to wait? Okay, I have to wait one minute. All right. Oh, speaking of Quaylog's domain, you're here for the tears list. I mean, I might make someone mad enough. Someone might come in here and yell at me for having Blight Town and Bleh. But like, it's a cool zone. It's a cool zone. But uh, okay. Let's see here. I like it a lot. I like Quillex City. I like it. You know what? You know what? I changed my mind. Blighttown gets to be in B because it's interesting. I have decided. There will be more there will be true blizz coming. It gets to be up there. I would not I, I'm saying that I, I I was staring at this and I was like, I can't put Blighttown under Valley of the Drakes. Valley of the Drakes is just kind of boring. So, mm -mm. all right, can I do it yet? I literally needed to wait one second. It just yelled at me. It was like, you need to wait one more second. Proper shout out this time. No, God damn it. I can't, I did an exclamation point. That's my own fault. Fucking, there it goes. I did it. I fucking did it. Go follow, go follow the forest witch. Do it! We were actually- you, you missed a K-turn earlier, we were talking about the difference between being scared in the woods versus being scared in, say, like, the desert. The different kinds of fear. <laughs> okay. Oh, is it really time? No, 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 why- why was Northern Undead Asylum so far down? Northern Undead Asylum- same with the Great Hollows, what the- hello? Ashley can stay down there. Northern Undead Asylum should have actually technically been our first one, but uh, it's there. <laughs> it exists. It exists. It's there. Yeah, there's, I mean, it is cool. You know, it, we, I like how it, it really does. See, it's so cut off from the world. You need a big magic bird to carry you away. It's cool. But um, I mean, it, it's there. <laughs> it's like the undead bird. It's like, it looks nice. It's fine. Eh. I don't have any super love for it. Great Hollow, though. This one might be trickier. So it's the giant tree that's, like, hidden. So you get to it from Blight Town, and you, like, go through two invisible walls. Like, you have to hit two phantom walls, illusory walls. And then you get to the, the Great Hollow, and it's basically this giant tree you have to walk down. And when you come out at the bottom, you realize, oh, is this one of the, well, I don't think it's on the arch trees, but it's definitely almost big enough. It's down here with the arch trees. Um, the Great Hollow is in concept a really cool thing. I would argue it's kind of frustrating finding your way around, but it's super worth going through here let's see we should let's um let's arrange these like this let's get them actually so like Quaylog and Undead Parish down there yeah 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 there we go something like this Great Hollow I'm torn it says great I mean it's great because it's really big <laughs> they mean big um I'm torn because the concept of it is really cool and where it leads is really cool, but I'm gonna put it here, I think? The Depths has the Gaping Dragon, so I think I have to put it below Depths. Okay, we're ready. It's time for... Anne Orlando. Anne Orlando is your reward for getting through the first half of the game, essentially. Uh, you make it through the Undead Burg, you ring the bell, you drag yourself to the bottom of fucking Blight Town, you get glomped by a whole bunch of really nasty people who want to hug you. Uh, you get toxic. Britney Spears plays in the background. Like, it's real nasty. Then you have to go through Sen's House of Traps. 
Oh, dead man. Thank you for the cherry vanilla. It's a new one. <laughs> um, hiya. How you doing? It's really, and what's funny is we just hit Anna Orlando, and this is Biggie and Smalls theme, or in Sin Smoke, the guys themselves, the ones. <laughs> You know, I just had a thought. Undead Bird does include Capra Mmm. Mmm. I'm torn. All right, you get to go back up there. And Orlando, city of the gods. You get through. You get through all of that crap. You get through Sen's fortress. You call in Tarkus. He helps you take out the golem. And these weird creatures come down and pick you up and take you up into the sky and literally drop you in the city of the gods. And that vista, like that, that first view you get to see of the city, it's, it's such a reward after everything you've been through. Like, I... I want to give it S tier. I want to give it S tier. That moment is just so powerful. Mm, it's hard. It's hard. I think we're gonna go. We're gonna go S tier. I mean, how can you not? And it's got Biggie and Smalls. I love that fight. That fight. It always takes me like an hour to do, but I love that fight. I love it. I love it. All right. Next up. An optional area and you have to go back to the, the undead asylum to get the doll that lets you go into the painting the painted world of Ariamis honestly I really like the painted world it's a very interesting concept I just can't decide if it should be A or B it's so unique the snowy world full of discarded people and things looked over by the crossbreed Priscilla who is half dragon? question mark it's unclear I never I have never once fought her I don't do it I leave her alone I'm on my way don't need to worry about it <sighs> this is, yeah, this one's hard. This one's hard. Because it's either, it's either high B or low A. I can't decide. This is the thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying my best not to let... Like, I'm, I'm letting things like lore and bosses kind of lean me one way or another, but I don't want it to be the main reason why I put something in a place. Like, I'm talking about the whole zone when I'm looking at these things. Let's put it high B for now. I might, I might move it. I might move it. The catacombs. Ugh. <sighs> I'm half tempted to put value of the drakes and bleh. Honestly, like, because I don't super dislike it, but it's just so I forget. You know, I forget that it exists. Torn. Anyway, catacombs. So the catacombs, you get there by going to the graveyard in Firelink Shrine. Firelink's really cool. It just has all these little paths going off of it, right? It's very, just go explore the world. Zero cats, false advertising. <laughs> Thinking? 
There are no, there are no cat enemies down there. There's lots of skeetons. There's lots of necromancers. And you have to take the necromancers out or the skeletons will constantly respawn. Once you take the necromancers out though, they don't respawn. So makes it easier to get through the zone. Having a divine weapon also helps. Hmm, I don't have a huge love of the catacombs, honestly. It's just kind of like, I don't think it's bad, but for me, it's just kind of there. Um, it's exciting to go down into because it means you're heading for one of the, the three lords uh, that you need to, like when you place the lord vessel, it unlocks. There's like three barriers that get unlocked and this is one of them. Oh, it's my favorite music. It's Sif. Uh, this is the music of a hero. Okay. Catacombs. I'll give you high C. No, no. Darker, get over there. I like the garden more than the basin. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, staring at this, maybe do that. Honestly, I don't care about the general basin that much, but the garden is really cool. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, the catacombs are just kind of there. They're part one, right? And um, the boss is Pinwheel, who I think is really cool, even though they're a complete pushover. <laughs> um, they're in my intro, actually, my main intro that I use. Um, I've been using the other little, like, Plane start screen, so I'm not using it twice a day when I have double double streams planned. But uh, yeah, the pinwheel with the different masks is part of my intro. So I think he's cool. Uh, Ash Lake, here we go. Here we go. And Orlando, I'm putting you in high A. I'm putting you in high A. You're probably going to get moved back to S. But, Ash Lake, I'm just putting you right there. Ash Lake should be my first S tier, honestly. It is my favorite area in the game. You climb all, you go, you go to the bottom of Blight Town, you find your way to the Great Hollow, and you keep going down. And then when you come out, you're at the bottom of the world, literally. You are at the you are at this place where the stone arch trees hold up the world. Bless you, cat. <laughs> it's really cool. It's again, we're it's talking speaking of like we were talking about Firelink being one of the only places um, that has music. Ashley has music, and that is like easily also my favorite track. If it's not my number one, it's my number two, only because I do love Gwendolyn's music. Well, we might do music tiers next week, which will be much harder for me. I feel like zones are easier. Ash Lake is absolute S tier. And Orlando, you can go back up. You can go back up. I just wanted to do that for emphasis. You can go back up. New Londo Ruins. Oh my god. AKA New Londo Water Park. So New Londo Ruins is what happens when the Abyss gets out and they you choose the nuclear option. Like, oh, oh no, 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 no. We're, we can't let this happen again. Nuke it. I really like the New Londo Ruins. While it is a pain in my booty dealing with all the ghosts, like you have to use a transient curse. You actually have to curse yourself to interact with the ghosts at all, which means fighting them. Otherwise they can just hurt you and you can't do anything about it. It is a city. New Londo was a city where the, which was ruled by the four kings. It's unclear how four kings being in power work. Don't, don't worry about it. The four kings ruled. The four kings became enamored with the dark and the abyss it was threatening to basically burst forth into the world again. And if you play the DLC, you get first-hand experience as to why that is such a bad, bad thing to happen. Um, 
So the powers that be decided that uh, they were basically going to nuke the city. And by nuke, I mean they flooded it. They just flooded the whole city. And, uh, oh, no worries, Shane. Have a good night. Have good memes. No worries, no worries. I'll see you soon, I hope. They flooded the whole city. And I don't mean like, oh, we, we evacuated the city and then we flooded it. it. No. They flooded the city and drowned the city. The, the, the kings had become... Dark, not just dark influence, but they are, they became part of the abyss. They became part of the dark and it was bad news bears and they just fucking nuked it. Um, so the sealers, there, there are a couple of them. You find two of their bodies out in the world. So there were three sealers and I know I'm going off on the lore tangent here. Um, there were three seer, sealers and you find two of their bodies out in the world. One in Blight Town. I can't remember where you find the other one. Maybe the Painted World? And then you actually meet the third one, who is still doing his duty. The other two left. They got tired of their duty. He stayed to watch over what they had done to make sure that nothing escapes, right? Gives you... It's like, oh wait, you're here to do the linking of the fire? That you're your you're hero going on quest? Okay, well... You're going to need to get down there. You're going to need to get down to to the abyss, essentially. Um, because it's drowning the abyss doesn't kill it. You're just blocking access to it. <laughs> so when you drain... What I'm getting to here with all this lore talk. When you get the key and you drain the ruins, you lower the water level so you can walk around actually down in the city, the ruins of the city... The whole floor is just bodies. It's just bodies and skeletons and gook. It's really intense and dark. And that is why I am actually going to put it up here in B. I can't decide. Do I want to put it above Sens and Blight Town? I might at least put it above Blight Town. I might. And the Four Kings are a very cool fight. That is really tricky because you're literally fighting them in the Abyss. Um, which means you, it's pure darkness and you have no... Like, there's nothing to show you how big something is. And t so until they're like right in your face, you're like, oh, I am an ant to these guys. <laughs> I am nothing. It's very, very cool. Um, for me, the abyss, as far as like it ex continuing to exist as a space, I mean, it's there. <laughs> it's, it's there. I could put it maybe above Valley of the Drakes just because it's the abyss, but you know. It's whatever. It's New Londa Ruins that's, you know, like, the cooler bit in my, in my feeling. Um, oh, Firelink Altar. I mean... It's there. It's not really a, a zone. It's basically just this room where you set the board vessel. And then once you have all the souls and you put them all in, then the door opens. It's a it's a pretty room, but I mean it's it's just there. It's just not much to it. Um, Tomb of the Giants. Okay, Tomb of the Giants is the second half of the catacombs, essentially. So once you get through the catacombs and you defeat Pinwheel, you get through the next zone, and it's dark as fuck. And there's three different ways to light your way, um, but you're gonna need it regardless. It's the home of one of the first Nope gifts, where you you walk forward with your light and all of a sudden there is a skeleton the size of like a small building in front of you and you're like uh uh no 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 it's a walking on all fours hello no so tomb of the giants for me is definitely better than catacombs i have i feel like it has more 
more oomph to it. Um, I don't know if I like it better than, like, say, Blight Town, but it's still, you know, interesting. I think I might even put it somewhere down here. But the big skitons are cool, you know? I like the big skitons. Just visually not necessarily as interesting as even the, the parish. Because I like the parish because you're up... You realize you're up above the woods. And there's all these walkways and stuff. And I don't know. I like it. Um, hey, look. I'm pretty sure this is the Four Kings music. Good timing. Demon Ruins! You get past Quayluck Domain, you will reach the Demon Ruins. Um... It's, it is, it's nice, but it's where you start, I mean, aesthetically, it's, it's neat, but it's the point in the game where you start looking around going, oh, they ran out of time and money, <laughs> and they were rushing to make sure that, like, the zone was complete, so, at first you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's bonkers, there's, like, there's a Capra demon. There's a bunch of Taurus demons down here as regular enemies. That's really cool. It shows me how much stronger I am now. They're just dudes. And then you keep going into the zone and you're like, oh, oh, we were running low. We were running low. But the demon ruins is not, it's not nearly as obvious in the demon ruins as it is in Lost Eyes Alive, which is next. Demon ruins. Would I put it above Tomb of the Giants? I don't know. I, I will, I think. I think I'd put it above Tomb of the Giants. Um, if you if you do the Fair Lady Covenant, there's like a special door that opens for you so that you can uh, handle a certain NPC side quest a different way than it might normally go. So, uh, I got the Demon Ruins. Can I even put it above the Parish, maybe? Like, how do I feel when I get there? Eh, we'll leave it there for now. We're gonna have- there's gonna be plenty in B because there's gonna be lots that it's like, it's fine. It's just not my favorite, you know? Um, Lost Isolith. Oh, Lost Isolith. If only. If only. I would love to see- um, the remaster was a wonderful little thing they did to make sure that more people could play it. Straight up, I wouldn't say no to a ground up redoing simply because while I think things like Sense Fortress and Blight Town and the Darker Garden, you just leave them alone. Just make them fancier, you know, in current gen graphics and stuff. And I mean, these games still look, this game still looks really good. Um, but for places like Lost Eyes of Lift, I really, really they could go back and like I mean I guess we would lose dragon butt land but it's kind of like mm. <laughs> so yeah it's gonna be down here at the bottom of B just because it, it could be worse the dino butt land is kind of well this is not bad no you know what you know what I was saying how I was using bosses to that boss fight's gonna help me sometimes tilt things one way or another. It has the bed of chaos. Fuck Lost Isolith. <laughs> we're not. If we were judging, if we were judging the bosses, if we were judging based on bosses, it'd be down here. Okay? It'd be down here. Miyazaki literally apologized for the existence of the Bud of Chaos fight, okay? In the art book. <laughs> um, Duke's archives. Okay, we're gonna have to start. We're gonna have to start. We've got so many in B. It's gonna be. It's gonna be hard. Let's put, start putting the ones we're talking about at the front of B. Duke's archives. Okay. Another zone where we're heading for a Lord's soul. This zone. <laughs> I get lost. <laughs> I get lost. It feels like every other time I play the game. Like, I'll play through it once. 
and I'll be like, man, Duke's Archives isn't as bad as I remember. It's all right. Like, it's a little tricky to get with, you know, because of all the channelers and stuff, but it's not that bad. I didn't get lost at all. And then I'll play it again, like a while later, and I'm like, I've been wandering around the Duke's Archives trying to find that one spot for like 40 minutes. What the fuck? <laughs> So, Duke's Archives, it's not a favorite. Visually, it is interesting. Interesting that they didn't put the prison separately. Since the Duke's Archives has to include the prison, I don't want to put it in C. If it were just the archives, I'd just put it high C. Um, God, Lost Isolith, honestly. I need to put you down there. Um, <laughs> Duke's archives. Yeah, it's very visually interesting. Um, but I don't get excited about going there. And this is like my own personal feelings about it. So, yeah, we'll put it low B. Because visually it is interesting, but... Crystal Cave! Okay, speaking of visually interesting, so Crystal Cave, earlier today we were playing Dark Souls 3 and we were, we um, got to the invisible path that takes you to Yorshka. And here we go, the original, the original space for invisible paths. Lots of them, the Crystal Cave. I like the Crystal Cave a lot visually. Do I like having to fight big crystal golems on slippy, slidey crystals? No, I don't. But it is very visually cool. I would... And, it, and it's full of moonlight butterflies, too. Moonlight butterfly is part of why the Dark Root Garden is so neat. Um, so I kind of want to put it above Blight Town, but part of me wants to... Part of me is like, oh... Blight Town, though... Such a rite of passage. Like, I have a soft spot for it, right? Yeah, we'll put it there. Maybe above Undead Parish? Mm. It's a very unique experience, right? Hmm. Yeah, Parish is Andre, so I kind of I have to do that. <laughs> Sanctuary Garden! Okay. Sanctuary Garden's not very big. <laughs> uh, but it is a very neat little area that kind of gives you a um, visual indicator of what Ulysseal was truly like. Aesthetically. Um, and and Grandma, Grandma Elizabeth, the mushroom lady. The big Grandma Mushroom is there. So... While it's kind of a it's there, you know, kind of deal, it's, um, it's still, you know, Elizabeth's there, so it has to be high C. It has to be high C. Willisil Sanctuary. Wait, 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 wait. Sanctuary Garden. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm mixing up Sanctuary Garden and Willisil Sanctuary. Sanctuary Garden is where you fight the, that, the, the gatekeeper, keeping boss. So... Dark Souls 1, when you get to the DLC, there's immediately a boss. And if you can't beat that boss, maybe you should just come back later. Basically is how it goes. And it prepares you for the way that the, the bosses work in that in that uh, DLC because they work a little differently. So Sanctuary Garden is definitely a... It's there. It's there. <laughs> but Ula Seal Sanctuary, I would put... Hi, I see. It's there, but it's pretty. It's pretty. Okay, uh oh. Alright, who we got next? Who we got next? Um. Okay, let's see here. Township. Okay, the township is very spooky. It is a very spooky place. It's an interesting spooky place. Up there, maybe? I want to say I 
Would I rather go there or the crystal cave? Probably there. There's like more stuff to do. Royal Wood! In, this is another DLC area. We're getting into all the DLC zones here. Let's just, let's just put this here for a second. Why am I putting it there? No, that, that's breaking my rule. Putting it in B first. Royal Wood is basically a dark root garden. But in the past. Dun dun dun! So it's very cool. It's very neat. It's not bad. It's not my favorite. Um. Similarly, I'd probably put it somewhere in here. Yeah. Did I put it above Crystal Cave? I feel like visually I would prefer Crystal Cave. But the Royal Wood is very neat. Slippy. It's like slippy slideys. So many stone sentinels, I want to scream. Um, <laughs> the big armored dudes. Let's see. And technically, I mean, technically, Royal Wood, in a way, has, um, you know, bosses on that, technically. Some of them. So, let's see. Chasm of the Abyss. This is also part of the DLC. It is an interesting little zone full of friends. F R E N S. Look it up. They ever there's lots of friend shapes here. Very friend shaped. Um, and they want to give you hugs, but when they hug you, it hurts you. So it's you gotta hit them. Um, this zone, while visually kind of kind of like there's not a lot going on necessarily. It is the abyss. Like this is the, the here. This is just a little little chunk of the abyss where you can like there's a bonfire and you can talk to a dude after a, a boss fight if you've done things in a certain order. Chasm of the abyss is way more interesting lore wise and like what's going on, and you get to save Sif in the, in the past. So you know, Chasm of the abyss. I'd actually put it up pretty high. Um, yeah, I like the chasm. Maybe we'll put it here. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, we are there. We have finally reached the end of Dark Souls 1. Kiln of the First Flame. Oh, come here. You're ruining the moment. Kiln of the First Flame. This zone is so beautiful and so cool. And just looking looking around and realizing, wow, this the flame used to be so big. It uh, it was basically a fire constant fire tornado in here. This is Ash Lake's music, by the way. Since we're getting into favorites, I would put it at least an A. It's a very pretty, a very interesting, pretty place. Um, so now I need to decide if any of these, er, these like high Bs, need to be like As, right? I'm gonna say yeah. Painted world can come up. Painted world can come up. Maybe Sen's Fortress as well. Maybe Sen's Fortress as well. And then New Londo can start the B. Can start the B tier. Heck yeah! We have done it! Dark Souls 1. I didn't put any in bleh, although. There are parts of some and see I would like to put in bleh and fucking fucking better chaos can get the fuck out. But <laughs> but I, I do like to chuckle at Dino Buttland, so <laughs> You're running around on lava, it's 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 an alright time. It could be worse. And then you get to the bed of chaos and it is worse. Anyway my my two S tiers are Ash Lake and Anna Orlando. I'd be willing to potentially move Firelink up there, but I still think Firelink from one should be like the 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 kind of almost like the gatekeeper between A and S, at least for the time being. So yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think this is, this is Dark Souls 1. Now, I'm trying to decide. So, like, we have -da, 2 and 3 down here, right? And I'm trying to decide if what I, if I want to do something where, like, I put an extra one up top so that I can just move all the Dark Souls 1 stuff up, right? Or should I just, like, make more tiers below it or something so that we can have it separated and I can keep the separation? Let me, I need to at least do, like, a screen cap or something of this. So I will do that. Um... I'm trying to, um, like, I'm looking. I'm looking to see if there's anything I want to change. Is there anything I want to change? Oh my gosh, I'm, I've been cherry vanilla for half an hour. Haha. <laughs> I got so caught up in talking. Um, you got double cherry vanilla time. Um, hmm. I'll put Duke's archives up a bit. Just for being more visually interesting. It's Priscilla's music. I can I just okay. Okay, I just had I just had this thought about comparing Priscilla's music to Guinevere's music. And I gotta write I gotta write it down before I forget. So forgive me if I'm quiet for a second, because I wanna save this for one of the music tears. Instead of always repeating myself. Oh my god, I gotta go get this shrink. Ah! Whoa. I forgot. I'm in this window. Hi! <laughs> How you doing, small meat? Gotta write this thought down. There we go. Okay. Thought written down for whenever we do music tier lists. Had dinner? Gotta do next. Ugh. Oh, oh. Fun times. Fun times. Sounds like a chewy, wonderful, wonderful day. I'm sure it'll be interesting, though. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Anything else? Basin versus Great Hollow. Just like looking at it, just kind of glancing over. based on, like, whether or not I want to play them and see it, you know? Oh, Catacombs does have Valmos in it. I do like Blacksmith Valmos. Crunchiest voice in the whole series. I feel like Ulysses Sanctuary should go over here somewhere near Undead Asylum. And Darker Basin is, like, it's pretty, but I prefer garden, you know? I just prefer the garden. There's more going on. Um, yeah. I admit, I admit, I would be willing to put Anor Londo here. I would be willing to put it here. But I might get attacked. <laughs> Even though this is my tier list. Um... And and I can I can objectively say Anor Londo is an S tier kind of area, for sure. Cool. Okay, let me. Where's my um? It's one of my favorites. It's my favorite. Well, oh, you need to be bigger. Why are you why are you that size? Hang on. Wait, where'd you go? There you are. Let's let's make this bigger. Yeah. Oh, probably because it and it stretches like that. Yeah. Okay. 
There we go. That's probably fine. Yeah, something like that. There we go. While I'm doing... No, this side. Oh my gosh! Vlad! Hello! Let me, let me take this down. Hello! How, how are you doing? How is your stream? Welcome in, guys! I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good and not, like, get distracted by my thought and forget to do the shout-out until, like, five minutes fast. What were you doing? Over on your stream. Welcome in. I am Marley, if you don't already know me. I am the curse that lingers over this place known as the haunt, full of freaks, misfits, and weirdos. You are most welcome. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? We've been doing... We're, we're doing zone tier lists. <laughs> um, and it's all my own personal opinion, although I can't help but do some weird objective stuff as well. Like, I was just saying how I I would actually maybe put Anna Rolando here. <laughs> Working hard on some arts. Head chilled time. Yeah! Awesome. Heck yeah for getting shit done. Heck yeah. I'm so glad. So, so glad. My goodness. Yeah, I, I kind of... I, I said I wouldn't, but I think I'm gonna. Let's see if somebody comes in here and gets mad at me. So I'm willing to move it back up here. I just want to see what else ends up in S for me. <gasps> Wait! Giant friend. Yeah, no. It's gotta stay up there. It's gotta stay up there. I was just trying to finalize uh, Dark Souls 1 zones so that we can move on to 2. <laughs> Don't think I'm into Dark Souls, but I love a good tier list. I mean, I sit here and I ramble about my weird reasonings for <laughs> why they get to be in certain places. So hopefully it'll be entertaining. But I am I'm gonna do a little, a little snip and sketch here so I can save. <gasps> and it's perfect timing. We're getting to the end of the soundtrack. Say hello to like the saddest song in the whole fucking series. I'm gonna turn it up here in a second. Okay, now that I have that. Uh wait, 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 wait. Now that I have that, move over here, and then I can un... Yeah, there we go. Pl it's the Plink Plonk song. Yeah, it's the sad Plink Plonk. I'm gonna turn it up. Saddest, arguably saddest song. I'm trying to think if there's another one that's more actively sad. Because, like, the fight against Sif is really, really sad. Like, it makes you depressed but the music is that of a hero. Like, you're sad because you can tell you're not fighting a beast, you're not fighting a bad person, you're fighting a hero who is just doing what they were, they felt was best, and you have to defeat them, and it's the worst. And if you do the DLC first, they're also your friends, so that's great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, um, Sif is the great gray wolf that you might see on various, like, fan art and stuff. I am, I, I am big Poochie Wolf of fan club. She is the coolest. And she's absolutely a hero. But in order to progress your, your, your story, your quest, you have to fight her. Uh, and it's really, it's very interesting because if you, if you walk in before having done the DLC, um, she shows up, growl, grabs her big sword because she's a cool wolfie that wields a great sword in her teeth <laughs> and she swings it at you and you fight. Um, but if you do the DLC first, the DLC has to do with like, you literally go back in time and you experience events of the past and she is there as a young, as a young wolf. She's like more like regular wolf size. And instead of like this big monstrous beastie thing. And um, 
you can even fight together if you if you call her in um, for one of the boss fights and you, you save her. And there's this whole thing with that. Um, could go on and on and on about her story. But essentially, if you do the DLC first and then you go to fight her, because she's in an optional area you don't have to do right away, um, she'll recognize you. Like, she'll come and she'll, like, put her paw on you and growl at you and then she sniffs you and she recognizes you and she looks really upset and really sad and so instead of being like rawr let's go she gets her sword and she's like i can't let you do this <laughs> basically in her in her wolfy way and you have to fight her <laughs> you don't have a choice it makes me cry like i cry every time <laughs> it's yeah it's that it's that and they make it worse because it's a unique fight in that if you get her health bar down really low and then back off like you ba you back away you'll notice that like she starts slowing down as her health bar goes down she starts slow getting slower and when it's really really low like she falls over when she tries to do her big attacks it's so depressing <laughs> So, yeah, you don't, it's, it's just, they didn't have to put that in there, damn it, but they did. They knew what they were doing. Because <laughs> you're fighting a fucking hero. It's a hero fighting a hero, like, to progress, like, their story. It's, it's, yeah. Anyway. And this is the credits music. It's very beautiful and whimsical. And we, I think, I think I'm happy with the way this looks. I think I'm happy. I think I want, I still, I think I want Kill and Above Painted World. Although Priscilla is very cool. Dark Souls devs went, bitches love being depressed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think this is good. Do I want to put, you know what, you know what? I'm going to put Valley of the Drakes above Abyss just because I, I'm associating, while you do fight the Four Kings in the Abyss area, I'm associating them more with New Londo. And I associate the abyss with just talking to Kath, and I, I never do the Kath path. I mean, frankly, I never do the Frampt path either. I, I, I always go, make sure I get my my Sif time though. I, I always tell them both to fuck off. <laughs> I'm always like, I, I set the vessel. You know, tell me what to do. I do it. It's for me. And then they get mad at me. 